This video is from a channel called Think Before You Sleep. It came out in October of 2020. I did watch it back at the time, but I was traveling. I remember when it came out. I was about a month or two sober. I was traveling from Texas to Florida, made a pit stop in Pittsburgh. And while I was in the airport, people were tagging me that this guy covered it. And I watched it back then, but I totally forgot about it until it just came across my feed uh, today or last night. And I'm going to play this mostly in its entirety. It's only 24 minutes long. He, you know, covers mostly the Parker's story, but, you know, he, he goes on to cover the rest of our story from that brief period in our, in my life, the kids' lives. Um, I may stop it uh, occasionally. He's got some minor errors. I don't think that's any, I don't think it's intentional by any means. From what I can tell, this guy's pretty legit. Um, and then I'll give my commentary at the end. Without further ado. Parker, honey, now's not the time. You need to come in and we can talk about this, okay? The kids told me that you want to live with him. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we'll talk about it in, inside. Uh, I, I don't... I don't want to get out. Do what now? I don't want to get out. I'm sorry? I don't want to get out. I'm sorry. The, the, you're, you're a child and you don't get to make all the decisions. Sweetheart, I hate to, I hate to say this, but you're being real ugly right now. This is being super duper disrespectful and you need to come home now. And if I have to call a police officer to come help me, I would hate to have to do that, but I sure enough will. So you came to bring the, the kid back, right? Yes. For my children. Okay. You don't want to get off? I'm sorry, I'm scared to go on. This clip is from an old story that happened back in 2013. The great thing about this being old is that situations like these take a very long time to unfold, and now that it's been seven years, we can kind of binge watch the entire story. We'll begin with a video that started it all that has an astounding 30 million views on it. This video stars Parker, who is 14 years old, and he has decided that he no longer wants to live with his mother, Candace. On this day, Parker's dad, Caleb, went to drop him off to his mom's house, along with his three siblings, but Parker refuses to get out of the car, and so drama ensues. Now, Parker's mom is a very good manipulator. To the untrained eye, a lot of the techniques that she uses would go completely unnoticed. But let me say this, because I haven't said it in a while. The great thing about all of this is that if you can pick up on the techniques, they don't work. And that's all you need to do. There's no great battle here. You just have to recognize manipulation and not engage with it. All we have to do is stop falling into traps and our lives will immediately get better. So let's talk about how Candace is manipulating and abusing. I counted at least 10 different things that Parker's mom uses to manipulate him. I'm not going to go over all of them, but I will go over the most prominent ones. Parker. Yes, ma'am. Let's go. It's time to go in and talk. This is not the way to go about this. What is the way, then? I already told you to come in and tell me what your concerns are, to come in and talk to me. Well, thank you. My concerns are here. If you want to be, no, because it's time to go in. Okay, this one was really good. If you watch this whole hour of Parker talking with his mom, you're going to notice that his mom is very socially fluent. She knows how to handle a conversation. And I think what she did right here is something that most people would completely miss. Multiple times during the video, Candace says that Parker needs to go inside of the house so that he can talk his problems out with her. Why is she doing this? As Parker said, why can't they just talk it out where they are? There's no reason they can't do that. Well, of course there's a reason they need to go inside of the house, because Parker's mom needs to isolate him from his father. That's what abusers do. They isolate you from the help of your friends and family. That way, you are weak and vulnerable. Parker's mom wants to take his father, Caleb, out of the equation, who, by the way, is mostly silent during this interaction. Despite the behavior of his mom, Parker's dad is fairly professional during the interaction as he sits back and lets Parker talk to his mom. The second effect of the technique Parker's mom is using is that it creates a two-on-one social situation as opposed to a two-on-two -two situation which gives social proof to the mother. This is something I actually learned during my very brief period in sales. When I was in sales, before I quit because they forced us to lie to customers, 
we would do anything we could to add more people onto our side. If you were selling a customer, you would say something like, we have a 20% off deal, but I don't have access to the promo code. Let me get my manager so we can type it into the computer for you. Boom, now the manager is in on the sale. Now it's a two-on-one sale, and there's more social pressure on the client. How about three? You know what? Let me get Jim. He is our tech guy, and he can explain the technical details much better than we can. Now you have three people on one, and that makes it way harder for the client to say no. That's what Candace is doing. She's trying to isolate Parker from his father and put him in a situation where it's Parker versus her and Parker's stepdad. This way, what they're saying will have more social proof, which will make it way easier to get Parker to comply. After this, Parker's mom accuses his father of being high all the time and says that his father is a bad influence on him, but when Parker asks why, she refuses to specify and give any actual examples multiple times. There's a lot of things that Caleb has checked out on by his own choosing. As in what? You name it, baby. What a fantastic non-answer. Then she pulls the, who hurts you? I'm telling you, you need to get your little bottom out of this car, and you need to come in. Well, first, I just want to hug you because I can see that you're hurting. Parker, I can see that you're hurting. Come inside so I can give you a hug. Please, that is just another tactic to get him away from his dad. Then she pulls another subtle trick and starts changing the language around. She calls Parker's dad by his first name and then refers to Parker's stepdad as his father. Do you think FaceTiming is the same? Do you think that the the same relationship you would have with Caleb if all you did was FaceTime him? No. Daddy's going to call the cops. You need to you need to get out. You need to do the right thing. Daddy as in his stepfather, is calling the police on him. She did that on purpose, and she does it many times throughout this video. With the exception of a few times, Parker's dad is almost exclusively referred to as Caleb, that man, or him. On top of that, she insists that when Parker is with her, that's where his home is. It's no longer visitation with uh, your father, and it's time to come home, okay? It's time to come home, as in when he is with his father, he's not at home. In her words, he is over there. His home is his mom's house. After this, Candace pulls every possible trick to get her son out of the car. She emotionally abuses him by saying, you would never do this to your father. You wouldn't do this to him. Then she tells him if he goes with his dad, she will forbid him from getting his stuff like his backpack, where he keeps all of his schoolwork. That's where your backpack is, for crying out loud. I'm not going to bring you your stuff. She tries to bribe him with a car. You don't even know. Like, this is the biggest day of your life, and you don't even know what you're doing. What's the biggest day of my life? Oh, my gosh, Parker. We were going to pull your Trans Am around in just a minute. Your car's here. Okay. Yay. We're so excited to show you and film it. What is a 14-year-old going to do with a Trans Am? He can't drive. She even spends quite a bit of time playing the victim by making herself small and talking in a softer voice. She suggests that Parker's father wants to shoot her. She cries randomly when she calls a friend to help with the other kids. She cries when the police get there. Then, things start to get good as Parker reveals who she really is. But I do not think you're safe over there, and I will not just let you drive I, off in this car. And I don't think I'm safe over here. Well, why? Because you've hit me before. I will hit you again. I will spank you again. No, you I don't. You, you don't spank. You hit me in the face. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Face. And you choked. Me. You have had grabbed my throat before and pushed me up against the wall one time because I did my boots, and you would not let me bring them over. I, have I remember it because we were in the hallway by my room. I don't choke you, Parker. No, you about. did not choke me, but you had your hands around my neck, and you and him were cornering me, and I will not go back over here. I have Please, never for the love you. of God, let me leave. No. I will hit you again. Nice threat. Let's compare that to Parker's father, who says this in a different video. This isn't how our society, I don't think this is a healthy society to raise kids in, to punish and beat and yell and scream and arrest and in order to correct behavior regrettably and I've talked about this in the past I've spanked them 
but even that what those few times are just too much so we have one parent who openly says that she will continue to use violence to parent her kids while the other one says violence is wrong and he regrets using force against his kids the few times that he did something to think about anyway parker's mom then tries to force him out of the car i think he could he told her to consider letting me go legal custody of you, Parker, and I'm unlocking this car. No, you're my no, child. I'm not getting out. No. Okay. I'm, I'm getting you out of the car. Can we ask for the door to be unlocked? You can unlock it. Do what? This is a, this is a parent adult. This is a parent child situation. Get out of the car, Parker. No. This is a civil issue. Okay. Like you're, you're saying you're following the people. Don't you want to follow me? Get out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> Love, no. This is really the wrong way to do get, this. Get her arm out. No, I'm not getting my arm out. You're my kid. Stop. You're stop. my kid. Stop. No, um, no I'm not going to stop. 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 <laughs> stop. I can't. I can't. Stop. Get out. Neither, neither am I. Parker, if I, I have to use force to get you out. Okay, that's what I'm saying. This is ridiculous. Come home. No. I appreciate it. I really. Did I get my? Okay, thanks. And I'm allowed to do whatever to get this baby out of the car. Can my husband help me? Please don't. No, get. Stop. No. Stop. Get out. Get out. Parker did go a little overboard when he shouted. But imagine how you would act if you were 14 and you were about to be forced to go into a home where your parents are abusing you. Both his mom and his stepdad are abusive. We'll get into the stepdad later. But more importantly, after Parker's mom tries to force her way into the car, she gets stopped by the police for causing a disturbance. Then she asks the police if she could charge her own son with assault for rolling the window up on her arm. I want to wreck the and I want to wreck what do we your do recommendations. Then what do we do? We need to press charges against them. Prepared to do that right now. And I, I appreciate y'all right being right civil there. about this. Right there. Yeah, right right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. You don't see that? So you want to, you, you want to press assault charges? Anything to anything to get him away from? No, he's going with him. Even if he even if he's going to go ahead and file the assault charge, he's probably going with him. I've never obviously never been inside the home. I don't. Can you believe that she would create a police record for her own son for defending himself after she tried to assault him and recruit his stepfather to assault him? The cop tells her that if she presses charges, Parker has to go with his dad because he can't leave Parker in the home if he's being violent. Looks like that plan failed. At this point, I want to take a little pause to say this. This may seem pretty obvious, but you shouldn't have to use force to get your kid to want to live with you. They should be jumping to see you if you are a good parent. The fact that Parker is not happy to see his mom tells us that she is doing something wrong. She shouldn't have to use violence to get him out of the car, and she shouldn't have to use violence when she parents at all. Candace goes on this big tirade about how Parker is being disrespectful. Well, what have you done to earn your child's respect? You are abusing him. He doesn't owe you anything. If you want respect, start acting like a good person and earn it. You don't earn respect by demanding it. You get respect by showing good character and accomplishing difficult things. Parker doesn't miss a beat and calls her out right away on her attempt to get him arrested. She just called me your baby, but she's threatening to sue me. I'm not trying she, to you sue just, I'm you. I'm doing press anything charges. I can to get you away from him, babe. I'm your, I'm your baby, but you were going to press charges on me because you put your arm in the window anything, and I tried to peacefully get it out. Anything to get you away from Caleb right now, you babe. You seem the tension here. Anything to get you away from your father. What a horrible person. Amazing catch for a 14-year-old, by the way. A few minutes later, the officer tells Parker and his dad that he is free to leave and Parker can stay with his father. Parker goes into the house to get his schoolwork and claims that his mom tried to forcefully block him from doing so while he was in the house, off camera. Once he grabs his stuff, they leave. As for the rest of the story, there's a lot. 
I believe I watched 22 videos in relation to this case, and there is a ton to cover, but I'm going to try to do this as concisely as possible. So, after this event, Parker stays with his dad for two and a half months until they go to court. This is the end result of their court case. What we have right now is a judge signing a court order stating that sole custody is in fact with the mother. Sole custody. This is where I mainly wanted to pause. This cop here, whether he was told sole custody, whether he mixed up his words, whether he just straight up lied, I really, I, I don't know. I don't know how or why he chose to say those words, but nobody has ever had sole custody of any of my kids, not their mom nor me. Um, sole custody, as far as I've always heard of it, sole custody means the kids stay with the mom or the dad, whichever parent has sole custody 100% of the time. Shared custody is what we've always had. One parent is where the kids with, live with. They call it um, the, the right to designate where the child lives, and the other one gets visitation. I've always despised being labeled a visitor. I've just, I've never could stand that. Anyway, again, I don't know if this cop just misspoke or if someone lied to him and he was repeating it, or I, I really don't know, but nobody ever had sole custody. Hence the reason, even in this own, even in this video, this guy's own video, he shows where over the next three years, I went from Odessa to San Antonio twice a month, every time without missing a beat other than when getting thrown in jail to the mother dad gets visitation we have evidence of her abusing her son and she gets sole custody family court obviously parker is not happy about this i don't know why she thinks that making you live with her is going to make you love her because she's psycho anyone watching this She's psycho. After calling his mom psycho, Parker proceeds to walk to his mom's car as slowly as possible. All while his dad tells him that he has to go with his mom and does not make any attempt to go against the court order by preventing Parker from going. Very professional. Parker gets to the car, sits down in the parking lot, and refuses to get in. This, I've talked about this in one of my videos, and I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. I think it's called Caleb Manipulated or Caleb, Caleb Coached His Kids. I will have an explanation or a, a link to that where I explain what this slow walk was and why he was sit, sitting down like that. It's called civil dis disobedience. And he learned that when we met uh, the legendary Bobby Seal. Uh, two days before at an event in Austin, Texas, on police accountability. The police officer who was there talks to Parker, and to the credit of the officer, he was actually able to de-escalate the situation and get Parker to agree to go with his mom. Fortunately and unfortunately. Fortunate that no violence occurred. Unfortunate that Parker had to go with his abusive mom. But that's not all, because before this trial happened, Parker's mother decided to move from Odessa, Texas, where his father is, all the way to San Antonio, Texas. Google Maps says that's about 350 miles away. Now, I don't have any proof of this, but judging by her other behaviors, I believe that she moved so that it would be extremely difficult for Caleb to see his four kids. I don't have any proof of that either, but I've got my suspicions. Candace spends all this time calling her ex-husband Caleb a deadbeat dad during the first video, but it turns out that despite the ridiculous five-hour drive, one way, Caleb almost never missed a weekend visit. He even purchased a motorhome so that the kids would have a place to stay while they were with him. Parker's mom doesn't miss a beat, though. She continues her antics to keep Parker away from his father by confiscating a cell phone that belonged to his dad that Parker smuggled into her house. Parker was using the phone to call his father outside of a visit, and she couldn't have that. Eventually, Parker grows up and gets set free at 17. However, the whole cycle gets repeated again with Parker's younger brother, Blaine, who is the second oldest and is 13 at this point. Uh, minor correction. He was, he's third oldest. Just minor. Oh, look at that studly face. And those sunglasses from Top Gun. 
Candace seems to love to deny that she's abusive, but I have to say, the kids don't lie. Bad parents hate it when their kids misbehave because it reflects poorly on their parenting. No matter how much they try to hide who they are, the behavior of their kids always reveals who the parents are. That being said, in 2017, Candace called the police on her son Blaine, had him committed to a mental hospital, and had him drugged up on Abilify. Why? This is why. Okay. So he's going to be taken to a hospital to get evaluated because of what he said to my partner. Okay. What did he say? I don't know fully what he said. I, I showed up late. Ballpark. Uh, that he threatened to burn the house down. Now, why would he do that? Kids don't act out without a reason. Maybe this has something to do with it. A month later, Blaine had some sort of spat with his parents about his cell phone, so he sat in one place and refused to move until he got his phone back. Blaine's stepfather, Jason, forcefully moved him and injured Blaine's back so badly that he had to go to the hospital. These are the people who got sole custody? So eventually, when Blaine gets older, he also chooses to live with his father. Oh, I almost forgot. In this interview, Caleb reveals how much money he was paying his ex-wife. $2,600 in child support and $2,000 a month in alimony. $4,600 so that he could drive 700 miles round trip, all to watch his kids get abused by their mom and stepdad. Eventually, some stuff happens that I don't understand all too well, and Caleb gets the three boys to live with him, while his daughter chooses to live with her mother. Caleb no longer pays child support and alimony, and now we are up to date. End of story. Now, this suspicion always crosses my mind because misery loves company. Typically, both parties have a problem. This is way off topic. If you were watching this and you've made it this far and you have an Apple, Apple, Mac, any Apple, what that dinging so sound, if you can put it in the comment section, I'll give you a gigantic shout out. I've turned off every notification I've got. I've turned my phone off. I've turned on the do not disturb and it keeps dinging and I can't, it's driving me bonkers. This is really unprofessional, but I've got to, I have to know, please, if you know how to turn that thing off, uh, let me know in the comments. Problem in these situations, which is why they got together in the first place. That's kind of my problem with the whole feminist thing where the single mom is the perfect innocent angel while the dad is the deadbeat loser. No, you had a kid with a deadbeat. You chose him instead of some responsible nice guy that you put in the friend zone. You are just as much at fault. As much as Caleb looks like the good guy here, and he has certainly made an incredible effort to be in his kids' lives, he still chose to have four kids with this chick, which makes me suspicious of his character. Married her twice. True story. Sure. So I began my search because I like to be as fair as I am capable of being. If you watched my video on Nicholas Ravello and Karen Songalaza, you might remember that despite how evil Karen was, I did point out that Nick was kind of a loser who mooches off his aunt. So I found this video where Caleb said he went to jail. Aha, uh -huh. what's the story behind that? Well, it turns out that Caleb went to jail for two months because of the incident in the first video. The wonderful family court judge ruled it as a kidnapping, even though the op- Judge Den Whalen. This is who took Parker from me. Judge James L. Rex is who put me in jail. Officer said on camera that Parker was free to be with his father. However, I did find a video where he is riding in a car with Parker when Parker was first freed from his mom. During the video, Parker at 17 is chewing tobacco on camera. Parker is committing a crime on camera, and Caleb makes no effort to mitigate the behavior, even though he says he doesn't approve. That's not appropriate. Caleb needs to be a parent. He is caught up in peaceful parenting, which is good, but that doesn't mean that you are place hitting with no parenting. If a kid is doing something that's bad for him, you take something away that he values as punishment to set the boundary, and then you have a conversation with him about the behavior. Caleb loses points for this situation. Parker was not committing a crime. I hate to burst his bubble by being 17 and having tobacco. It's a, it's a crime to sell in the state of Texas, to sell tobacco at the time, it's 21 now. Back then, it would be under 18. Um, it's kind of the same with beer. You can go with your dad to a uh, a restaurant, and if if you're if the kid's 20 or 18 or 17 or I don't I don't know what the age is exactly, but 
19 and the 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 the, the legal guardian can buy a beer for their kid i'm not saying you should any more than i'm saying i that parker should have been dipping snuff i dipped snuff back then hell i still do it that's where he got it uh it it was not the greatest parenting thing i i admit but it's a hell of a lot better parenting idea than calling the cops to be the parent of your own child Outside of that, I've watched a bunch of other videos of Caleb, and I've noticed that he is kind of weird, but he admits that he's weird. So, whatever. My radar is going off, and I know something's going on with Caleb, but I can't figure out what it is. He had his first kid at 20 years old. I was... Yeah, actually, I was 20. It was one month before my 21st birthday. Big mistake. Yes. But he admits that was a mistake. Yes. He admits to a lot of mistakes he made yes. in the past, and maybe he has reformed a lot of his bad behavior, Yes. which is why I can't really find much of anything. Anyway, that's me being fair. Okay, he goes on for another minute or so, but he's he has an edit here, and it, it doesn't last very long, so I'll pause it so I can read it. This is, These are his words. Edit. I found something. In this video he posted after I wrote the script, he says that he has no close relationships. I assume he meant outside of his children. This is a massive red flag. Having no closer friends will drive you insane. Not evidence of bad behavior, though, just a red flag. So, as I said, if you have been in a situation like Caleb's, then consider yourself a work in progress. There is a reason you put yourself out there. Yes, there is a reason I put myself out there. Uh, I do consider myself a work in progress. I am very highly damaged. Uh, it's interesting his choice of words here. He found something, and he goes on, tell me about the red flags, or tell the, the viewers about the red flags. This particular video that he's got me on, but right, he doesn't talk at all, this is a video I, I, I talked about. I don't remember which one because there's several, and I'm outside and I'm in a white shirt, where I'm talking about my alcohol recovery. Like blatantly open talking about how it started, how often, where it is now. Uh, and at the time, well, it had been for October 29th or whenever this was posted. I'd been sober about six weeks or a month or something. I'm just, I was just documenting what, you know, if he couldn't find something about me, bingo, buddy, you found it. I was a drunk for like seven years, a professional drunk, ever since Parker was stolen from me. Uh, on in that parking lot in August of 2013, that began it. I've talked about that. I'm very open about that. Before that, starting at age 30, I had drank before with my second wife. You know, we, we were, I don't know what you call it, regular drinkers, weekend drinkers, on and off, on and off. When I was married to the kid's mom, we never drank. Like, it's just something we didn't do. That wasn't normal. That wasn't anything we did back then. My, 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 how the times did change. So anyway, I'm going to let him finish up here. And I'm, there's a, well, I'll, I'll just show you. There. The point is, if you got married or got together with a woman like Candace, you need to check yourself because there is likely something bad about you that caused you to make that decision in the first place. He's right. You should be blaming yourself more than you blame your past partners. That yes. will keep you safe. One more thing I want to point out in this video, because I think that 14-year-old Parker was very brave in the first video and did a great job standing up for himself. You can see he is obviously uncomfortable doing that. He is fighting an opponent who is much more skilled than him, and you can tell he is uncomfortable because his voice is really low and he is super awkward in the way he speaks. And it's his mom, and he loves his mom. You know, Don't forget that part. But he did do something important that I think a lot of people are too afraid to do, and they don't know how to get to the point where they can do what Parker did. The good thing is that this stuff is not magic. There is a way to become brave and mitigate your fear when you are under stress. However, the answer is not pretty. The cure to being unafraid when you need to stand up for yourself is anger. You need to get angry. Anger destroys fear. You can see Parker using anger to overcome his fear several times in the video. If you are a giant wuss who lets people walk all over you, then you need to get angry. So angry that you'll actually do something. You have to be careful, though, because anger is a volatile force. 
Bruce Banner has the power of the Incredible Hulk, who can do amazing good, but when the Hulk gets out of control, he destroys everything around And I'm the weirdo. <laughs> Who's the nerd here, Mr. Think Before You Sleep? It's okay. You can be a nerd, too. <laughs> around him. So, there are rules. You don't get to physically attack people when you are mad, unless they physically attack you first. When you start, you can yell and scream all you want as long as you aren't around a child. Yelling and screaming is wrong, but it's not going to kill anyone, and it's not going to cause damage to an adult. However, as a second rule, you should be striving to stand up for yourself while using as little force as possible, which means you shouldn't be yelling after you've had a lot of practice, and you should be striving to de-escalate the situation as much as possible. Your goal is to develop that anger and shouting into assertiveness, and you are to be assertive while you are being as kind as possible. You'll find that you can get past quite a number of difficult situations just by being clear on your beliefs while you are being nice. That is how you stand up for yourself and keep people from walking all over you. It's going to be ugly at first, but if you can deal with these situations politely, kindly, and nicely, people will really start to respect you and you'll have a better chance of getting a favorable result. But with that said, I think that's... So anyways, um, I thought he had some really, really good points. Um, there's been several people who, in their own way, point out the different varying forms of, of gaslighting and manipulation, and I just thought he had some really good points. Again, I'm I'm a little baffled as to why he would, you know, say, oh, like in a gotcha moment, I've got to find something, you know, equal, you know, so there's somebody's bad, you know, on both sides, there's a little bit of bad somewhere. He found it. Yeah. Okay. I, but he, he didn't mention anything about me being a drunk for seven years, which I find kind of peculiar. Perhaps he's got an alcohol problem himself and doesn't want to talk about it. I can talk, I can say with, a, on a, with authority on that sometimes when you see bad behavior that you were also guilty of that you tend to kind of gloss it over or not talk about it at all or be very you know passive about it um yeah so other than that i i i appreciate what he did um i Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was, I appreciate what he did. You know, he covered our story. Um, hell, he's got f almost half a million views of his own on this. Oh, if you look down here, I may cover this. I'm not sure. This chick's name Bose. Bose versus the world. <laughs> she is hilarious. She reacted to the entire thing. And she's not nearly as kept together and professional and almost robotic monotone as this fella is, but she's so animated and funny. I might, I might do a reaction of a reaction. I guess that's what this is. Maybe I'm not sure, but either way, if you had checked it out, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So anyways, y'all take care. Bye. Hey, consider not hitting your kids. It's really cool. It actually works. They can grow up to be good people. Even if you don't hit them. <laughs>